The International Bar Association is the global voice of the legal profession and it is the world's leading organization of lawyers, bar associations and law societies. The ramifications and effects of the global financial crisis continue to expand and act as catalysts of further instability, particularly in the financial markets. In October of this year, the gathering of more than 5,000 legal practitioners, business leaders and regulators at the IBA's annual conference in Boston provides a unique platform to assess how legal and regulatory reform can provide remedies to these dynamic issues. In Buenos Aires in October 2008, opening speaker, economist Hernando de Soto addressed the then very current issue of the property bubble. What is seen essentially as a great credit contraction, as essentially a liquidity and risk pricing issue, which is what the subprime crisis uh, is labeled as, is also essentially a legal problem. People left the body of property law as it is being practiced in the world over the last 100 years, because that's when property really came to exist, and they left, went to an area of law called securitization, the kind of toxic paper that we see floating around the market and that is the cause of the distrust in the banks because it's not that we lack money, it's that we don't know how many banks are owning pieces of claims and property in the U.S. market. You don't know, and that's why nobody wants to give each other credit, because we don't know who owns what. Behind every crisis there is, it's security over property that breaks. It is when legal documents, they lack the word legal, it is when legal documents cease to represent the truth. It is when my passport ceases to represent me that we get into problems because we're six billion people in the world and there's no way that we can know each other except through law. In October 2012, Nobel laureate and economist Joseph Stiglitz assessed the state of the world economy and to what extent the instruments brought to bear since October 2008 had the desired results. Well, it's five years since the beginning of the recession six years seems to be the breaking of the bubble. Uh, the downturn, the slump continues with no recovery really imminent. In many of the countries, many of the countries of Europe particularly, GDP is still less than it was before the crisis. I think the problem is the diagnosis in Europe of what went wrong was wrong. And as a result, the prescription was wrong. Because they misdiagnosed the problem as overspending, the prescription has been, quite naturally, to cut back on spending, austerity. But one should remember, austerity has almost never worked. This is an idea that's been tried over and over again. Back in 1929, Herbert Hoover tried it, succeeded in converting the stock market crash into the Great Depression. The IMF has tried this experiment in East Asia, I saw it in the years I was at the World Bank. They tried it in Latin America. Each time, it succeeded in converting downturns into recessions, recessions into depressions. Also last year, Nobel Peace Prize winner and microfinance pioneer Mohammed Yunus touched on similar themes to Stiglitz. Many of the core issues affecting the global economy and in turn, national economies are so far reaching because they are inherent issues within the institutions attempting to resolve the crisis. Eunice went on to suggest that a completely different paradigm is possible, exists, and can be replicated. The whole system, what we call now a capitalist system, is based on the fact that business's job is to make money and everywhere uh, people are busy making money because that's what is defined as the mission of all people and all businesses. Mm. Even uh, in some cases an addiction and that's why the financial crisis came uh, because of an addiction. We have been talking about creating social businesses. Social business is special kind of business 
that we are trying to promote, uh, which are mission-driven businesses, not uh, personal uh, profit-driven business. Uh, the company makes profit, profit stays with the company uh, to achieve the goal that you have set uh, for yourself. So these are non-dividend companies to achieve uh, social goals, to solve human problems. Uh, we created a lot of them in Bangladesh. Many other countries around the world are very interested and in started social businesses in Europe, in Japan, in the USA, in Brazil, in Mexico, and so on. But first of all, uh, you have to uh, admit that this is a vacuum uh, of the institutions and policies. This is a barren land for that. So this is one that you have to do something, bring the institutions to work for the poor people, to get them out of the situation they are in, and also to create new legal structure. Because you think, okay, bank is there, why can't you create a bank to do that? Mm -hmm. But the law that creates the bank, which is a bank for the rich, uh, is a different kind of uh, animal you create with that law. It's a bank for the rich. So you need a different kind of legal framework to create the bank for the poor. This year's annual conference of the International Bar Association starts on Sunday, 6 October, in the Heinz Convention Center in Boston. The conference lasts for five days, during which we'll hold over 180 sessions. Amongst the keynote speakers at the opening ceremony will be Paul Volcker, former chair of the US Federal Reserve, and Madeleine Albright, former Secretary of State of the United States. We look forward to seeing you in Boston.